have a, you got a, uh, a map that shows what the urbanized area is for Loudoun County. Uh, urbanized area and city limits are, uh, you know, they're basic, they're not the same thing. Uh, so because if you look at the urbanized area, that runs all the way up uh, um, the, uh, the interstate up, uh, through the Stone Creek area, uh, all the way up to A. Howard, it runs up Phoenix Road uh, and up towards the Moody area. So, uh, and then you're out 84 and uh, you're down towards, uh, you know, out past the airport, those areas there. So that, it does not just, the urbanized area is not just the, the it's not limited by city limit boundaries. So, uh, so that, that map there is what I want you to, to kind of keep in mind and, uh, as, we, as we move into the next thing, which is uh, 5311 and 5307. Uh, transit. Currently, the county has a 5311 uh, rural transit uh, contract with the DOT, uh, and then the county subcontracts with MIDS Incorporated to provide uh, citizens of Lowndes County a, uh, a method of transit. Uh, the rule with 5311 is it either has to begin or it has to end in the, in the rural area. It can't begin and end in the urbanized area. So, uh, so that's that's the that's the deal with this issue, or the, the issue with that is it, it has to begin or it has to end in the uh, in the rural area, in the unurbanized area. You can you can pick it up and you can go to the uh, to the urbanized area and then you can then you can catch that bus in the urbanized area and go back home to a rural area. But one of those stops has got to be uh, in the rural. You could live in the city of Al Austin and your doctor or wherever, wherever you're visiting is in the rural area and that, that would still be a pleasant trip. That could be a could be a, an incentive for doctors in these commercial developments to move into the animal friend area too. Until so many of them get there that it qualifies for an urban area and then we're done again. And how we done it? And the last that's, that's the hard part. It has nothing to do with incorporated versus I mean it's so uh, they you know yesterday uh, with y'all being down here I went to that uh, to the transit uh, defects uh, committee meeting that they had yesterday with with MIDS and DFACS and uh, DHS and, uh, and all those uh, all those guys there, and it's uh, it's really interesting all the different funding that's out there that folks are eligible for that they can that they can use to help you know offset these transit costs. That is part of 5311. So uh, so there's I mean you know, there's money out there that helps that helps you know offset and support these things, but you just got to make sure that it, they're eligible. Cost. So that's basically 5311. Then you have 5307, which is your uh, is basically your urbanized transit. Uh, it uh, it has to stay inside the urbanized area. Uh, it can't go into the rural area, and they have designated uh, pickup and drop off locations, bus stops. Uh, they have routes. They have fixed times. Uh, you know. You, and just imagine it's just like a mark. Uh, they're going to uh, they're going to pull up to a bus stop. They're going to pick you up. They're going to take you to whatever bus stop you're getting off at, and that's that's where you're going to be off. Whether you're you know how you get to that bus stop and how you leave that bus stop is you know entirely up to you. So uh, you know I know that uh, the through the NPO we have looked at you know several different you know routes and how things would work and different things like that uh, or, or 5307 uh, but you know none of these transit systems that you see you know operate in the bike they're all they're all a, a money pit they all, all of them operate in the red and the uh, you know for instance what the what Lowndes County is eligible for you know every year 5307 is a million and thirteen thousand dollars uh, you know a million and thirteen thousand dollars uh, that's that's about half of what they're estimating the cost to operate the system, uh, to operate a, a, train, a 5307 transit system. So where that other shortfall comes up is 
media, they're going to be looking to the city and the county uh, governments to, to pick up that shortfall. And you know, as of now, I don't think that you know, whoever, neither the city nor the county has, has either one uh, does not have funding available to pick up that shortfall. Well, an important part of this is this information began last year. And you agreed to spend 36000 some money to help subsidize the continued use of our program addressing the needs of the urban areas. Now, we also went in and looked at that with the assistance of MIDS, uh, Mike and Jason worked on that to come up with the numbers. The numbers that you are addressing in the uh, unincorporated area are ministry. That's right. It, uh, and I, I meant to put these in there, but I can I can get these uh, get these numbers for you. But uh, in July of 2016, uh, of the, the trips that were that were taken in July, uh, 481 were about off of the dollar. Ten were about off of the dash. 116 were about off of the rural period. So that's 16 that are, that are open. Uh, Riverton to Austin is 6. Uh, Lake Park to Austin is 8. Lake Park to Lake Park was 1. Lake Park into the, uh, to the rural area is 2. Uh, Hayhira to Austin is 1. Dasher to Austin 10. Dasher to the county 1. From the county into Valdosta is 1.5. From the county to Dasher 1. And county to county is 15. So, uh, you know, so of all those trips that were taken, uh, you're less than 250 trips uh, that were uh, that that were actually eligible for based on this, this new designation. Yes, based on this new designation, you only have about 250 trips that were eligible. Where just city to city, just in Dallas, was 481. And then, uh, and then if you look at all, uh, and then if you go to August, uh, the uh, just the city to city was 627 trips, just just people inside the city. Limits. So urban, urban, urban. Yes. Urban. Yeah. So the the reason that I'm focus on that is, is that we only agreed 36,000 or 30 plus for one year. To give ample time to discuss this, you be aware, city council will be aware, and to determine are you going to budget additional monies to support this? Are you going to discuss this with the city to see if they intend to address the 5307 and implement that? Because it's going to be, as Mike's already told you, different than what we're doing. Uh, but it's not going to be 36,000. You look at this year, you're looking at basically a third, roughly a third of the trips qualified. Yes. So instead of getting a million dollars, we're going to get $330,000. No, no, that, that 53 or 7 money is, is still there. We're just not having it. We're not getting into that money. Okay, well, 5311 money, what are we going to be getting from this? We're still getting, we're still eligible for, for basically all of those, all of that money, uh, as long as they, you know, they have qualifying trips and everything. We're only talking about a third of what our true trips were roughly last year. That's right. Roughly. So you're not going to be replacing the vehicles like you were that's because right. of the demand. But you're not going to have as much use, so therefore, there's no need to replace The demand number will be down. The number of uh, buses that they'll put in the fleet will be down. Uh, so, but your two thirds, but your two thirds of those trips, people still need to ride. Right. That's right. Well, during this time when this popped up last year, uh, MITS, was their phone was ringing off the hook. Uh, Pages phone, uh, all the, the front desk, everybody was getting hammered. What are y'all doing? Well, I think the chairman may have 
approached the city, I know I did, and their comment was, we're not prepared to do it. So that's when y'all came back and agreed to We're not going to leave the people stranded all, overnight, so we're going to continue this given the situation so that we have ample time to determine what the next step is. We're here now at the next step. You kick the can as far as you can kick it unless you plan on it. Does the 5307 require a dedicated route though? Yes, yes. I thought yeah. so. And I think yeah, that's what right. it's all. Yeah, I think that's part of it. That's the difference in the end. How bids operates now. There is on home call service basis rather than a specific route and stops. And the federal, oh, this, is, this is a federal program, right? This is, yeah, it's just a federal commission. Um, and that 50, if you go back to the July, <clears throat> They had 481 that was urban, urban inside the city of Dallas, and then in uh, and then in August we jumped up to 627. In talking to the folks from Mids, what you have there is you have uh, janitorial staff, function ladies, uh, folks like that that work at uh, work at these schools, and that's how they get to work back and forth working. They take mid months, uh, and, and all they have to do is just call in and that day they. I can't quote the exact numbers, but I just recall looking at some information in meetings and listening to what was being said. When they've done the, uh, the pilots shuttle program right, with a designated route, really the ridership was real life, real life. Yeah, I mean, it really did. It, it's just the same thing. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a question that, that, that move along with this. Has there been any, has there been any discussions with the third party provider of what that objective cost would be if they developed a designated route with stops in the urban areas? I, we discussed with them the concept. But they, I believe, are prepared to talk to a party willing to provide that. But frankly, I did not push it to the point you're talking about because I did not see it being solely the responsibility of the county to provide that. If there's another entity that wants to step up to the plate. Well, I have encouraged leadership in that other entity to do just that, and each time that I mention that is that, yeah, that's something I need to get done, or I need to do that, but they haven't done it. Um, well, you know, we're, we're at, Mr. Pritchard is saying, we're at a crossroads right now, and what I'm hearing is, is that the temporary relief for the folks that live in the urban areas was that we spent the roughly $36,000, $38,000 to get this to continue doing what they were doing. Mids and us can't continue that. If I'm hearing what, what I think I'm hearing is that to be able to do that, it's going to be substantially higher than $36,000 that currently was negotiated as a stopgap measure to be able to provide these services. Um, I don't, at this point, it, we're, we're going to have to decide what that number is and do we move forward with it or number one, it may be willing to continue to do it. They may not even want to do that. They may, and the city may want to go ahead and embrace and work with somebody like a third party contractor to establish a 5307 program. I don't know what the direction is. I don't know.
seven years ago, we looked at the city and the MPO basically said, let's look at doing a uh, training program where you had to have your central location, which you had to build. You had to have your maintenance. Uh, you had to purchase all those buses. Uh, and after you started looking at those numbers, and you said, well, what would the, what would the rider be? be? It was going to be unreasonable for the, pub, for the pop, public population that was going to be used. It was, yeah, and they were not going to be able to afford to pay that kind of, kind of price. So how much of that are you going to subsidize? That's what Mike said as far as none of them break even. Well, okay, so how much of it are you willing to pay? And the hard part of it is just like Mike said about the you know the the lunch room ladies and their transportation and stuff. I spoke to a former employee that some of you would probably know who his wife and um, two daughters when the girls were babies practically were in a horrific car accident that actually um, killed his wife. And one of the daughters has worked very hard all of these years to get to a level where she has um, gotten her GED and is continuing her education at Wiregrass. But she will never be able to drive. And so um, this family, one of them drops her off at Wiregrass in the morning as they go in and she takes her classes and she studies. And then for a few dollars, Mids takes her home every weekday to pay Hira. But because Wiregrass is located in that urban pocket, as well as where they live in Hira, she was excluded. And you know, he called me in tears and he said, I have watched my child for you know 16 years face and overcome every challenge that that accident put before her. I and mean, we never thought that she would be able to educate herself to this extent. And now, you know, I, I, I'm willing to pay every day. I can pay every day, but I can't pay $15 every day. So what am I going to do? And that was, you know, one of the things that got the ball rolling. So just when we make that change, those things are going to come back up because those people still have those challenges. Do we have any alternative to 5311, 5307? I mean, we, I think we all agree that 5311 program has worked good for what we needed to work to. Uh, now that our areas have changed and some of the urban areas, we used to be rural in our urban areas, it's going to eliminate a lot of our routes. Are there, is there any other grants or any other funding that we can get from somewhere else that might we can continue doing a similar similar program with different type of funding? I, I'm not familiar with another program. I know we went back and asked, could we change the designation of the urban areas? And we challenged that. And we were told absolutely not. When the census does that, MIDS has uh, non-5311 buses or vans. Uh, that, that what they do is they can service these urban and urban uh, type folks that where they get picked up and they and their Medicaid or their Medicaid, you know, uh, or their insurance pays for or something like that. They you know they go they do a lot of those trips on non-5311 buses. So those are medical trips. Medical trips. Uh, but I guess you know if you want, if you were on the, I mean they're on the main. So if you wanted a non-medical trip and you're willing to pay the fifteen dollars uh, that that they that they charge, then then they will probably come pick you up and take you wherever you can go. Those That's what they charge is fifteen or whatever it is. Fifteen dollars a trip. Those programs that are less than that have to be subsidized, either through Medicare, Medicaid, insurance, fifty three eleven, whatever. Like. Like, haven't you talked to some of the local people who already?
from my standpoint right now, if that if that amount goes up or potentially is going to go up substantially, that's going to really put pressure on our budget for us to even consider continuing to do the urban to urban. Um, you know, I, I'm just telling you, I, I have encouraged uh, leadership in the, the city to, you know, if you're going to do something, you got to get started doing something. Um, and sometimes maybe the only way that we're going to be able to get action is to take action ourselves, as we talked about. So I think that that's where we're at and we're in the budgeting process right now. And so it ultimately, before budget is finalized, we're going to have to make that decision. But I would say this, it's important that we go ahead make a decision about how we're going to, what path we're going to go to continue this service because the citizens of Lambs County and, and, and the citizens in the city of Valorosa, the Hayhire and Lake Park, Dasher, <coughs> they need to know just as soon as they possibly can rather than just a door closing on Monday morning, for example. We, we need to let them know right up front uh, and many times over that the pro program is coming to an end and that it's, you know, the city of Valdosta wants to develop a public transit system. They need to develop a public transit system because the 5307 portion based on the, based on the guidelines that we are currently working under, we can no longer provide that service. Isn't this uh, state of the MPA? Yeah. Next team, I think it's the next team okay. we have the discussion about that uh, 5311. I'm going to kind of come with 5311. Actually, I'm with 5311 now and 5307 in the future. Well, that's my point. I, and I'm going to come back with the experience of Miss Evans. That's what we've had a heck of a lot of this discussion and with very little action for the last 15, 20 years. And so, you know, we're going to have to make a decision. Somebody else is going to have to make a decision about what they're going to do, whether they are or they aren't, whatever that process is going to be, because we as Lance County government are in a position where we can serve the folks that's outside of that urban area through this program that we have been utilizing, the 5311 program, but because of their changes, we no longer can do the urban to urban pickups. So something is going to have to be done about that. Um, and then we, we just got to, we're going to have to come together get the information in front of us so that we can make a decision about how we want to address it. So it's going to be something that's coming up. Yeah, it's something that uh, really needs to address. I, I, my brother has utilized it for the VA appointment. So I know firsthand, uh, you know, so but I do realize, you know, but does your brother use urban to urban, or does he use urban to urban? You know, and like I said, you know, this is something that the city has to address. Just well, why does the city have to address it? I think in our years, our problem is over the years we have failed to advertise what we do, and so few people know about it. I think there's a lot of folks it's within the rural area really need transportation because when we first start off. We advertise weekly and had something to pay for something to read, you know, and send out flyers. And over the years, everything got paid for you from Jesus. And I don't disagree with you forever, but I do know those numbers have steadily increased since this program began. Not to the degree, I think, of what Commissioner Evans either wanted or hoped for, but they certainly have continued to increase. For some of us. But when you say, Commission, why do we have to do it anymore? No, oh, we're, we're, why do we have to wait for the city to do it? Well, 5307 program, is that strict with the municipalities? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like Albany and their county um, needle layers. They have partnerships. Basically, if I might, what, what I hear from the MPO is that local government, period leaving a million dollars on the table out of the 5307 program. A million dollars is different than the utilize. The problem with a million dollars is to get that million dollars, you're going to probably end up spending three. 
get. So it's that the step you want to go in to be able to do a, 53, a true 53 of that subsidized program. And that really is where the cities are at. You know, do they want to develop a public transportation program that will qualify for the 5307, that will give them that a million dollars, but are they willing to spend the additional revenue that it's going to take to, to develop a true route designated, stop designated public transit system in the city of Iowa? Well, I guess what I'm getting at is an urban area that includes unincorporated area as well as part of the city of in the city of Austin. So why is it the city of Austin's responsibility to come up with a, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking this question. Why is it the city of Austin, the city of Austin responsibility to come up with an urbanized program when not all of us in the side of the city limits of Austin? Why can't that be a county program instead of a municipal program? I'm just, just asking the question. If you want to take on the responsibility no, of a I'm not saying I do. I'm just transit saying. system, then yes, you could take ownership in it. You could. If we could, the county could be the one that receives that million dollars a month. We could just say, we're going to, do, we're going to be responsible for the transit. And any short policy, we're going to pick it up, regardless of what the city says. But that would be our, that would be our system, and we can run it. Uh, and you don't have to have a city manager for this. And remember, if you're going to do a partnership of shared costs, your contribution is coming from the unincorporated year revenue. Yes. Which makes a whole lot more difference. <laughs> That's what makes it difficult for the county to take ownership in. <coughs> is that yes, there are some urban locations or some unincorporated areas that's, that connects that urban urbanized area. But you still have the city of Hay Power is in it, the city of Alabama is in it, the city of Lake Park is in it. It's just those connected areas that you could take out in, a, in legitimacy for the county, the, the Venus Road moving area of that way uh, is truly unincorporated all the way.
a transportation uh, issue with a pricing with uh, uh, the number of vehicles with that. So it's not a, it doesn't fill that, it doesn't fix that or fill a need there. It's simply, would you be able to develop enough need ridership? And as you can see, the numbers uh, are extremely high. So to put in it, you know, that's been the dilemma that, that the, uh, the decision makers have had for years is that we just can't make a public transportation system pay. My research and what I've heard, I think that maybe there's in the, in the entire United States, there may be one system out of all public transit systems right now that does pay for itself. Everything else is subsidized.